welcome to One Book, One Campus, One Community Read and what that means to you. I'm your host, Tammy Thompson. I'm the Public Relations Coordinator at West Kentucky Community and Technical College. And I have with me Gail Robinson Butler, Lori Beth Wilson, and Kim Russell. And we are all part of the One Book, One Campus, One Community Read Committee to promote this to the community. And we want to tell you what it means to you, whether you're a student at West Kentucky, a faculty and staff member, or a member of the community. So we're going to start out um, just telling a little bit about uh, yourselves. Gail, just tell me a little bit about yourself. I'm the director of the Clemens Fine Arts Center um, at WKCTC, and as part of what we do in the programming for the Clemens Center, the One Book, One Campus, One Community Read has become an every other year project that we produce um, with a whole lot of partners both on and on campus. And Lori Beth? I am the West Kentucky Community uh, College Academy Director. I go out to the area high schools and help high school students earn college credit. We thought it would be a great partnership to remind, encourage, promote reading literature to the high school students, especially in our English classes. Great. And I'm the coordinator of the English department, and since we all in English 101, everyone reads this book, uh, part of that is, is my partnership with the One Book, One Campus, One Community group. Kim is instrumental in many ways, and part of that is the selection of the book, which I knew that you wanted to talk mm -hmm. about a little bit as well. That's right. So, um, you want to take that now, or have I jumped way too far ahead? Well, that's all right. But first, let's just tell let's just tell what exactly one the one book project is, so that everybody can kind of be on the same page. Gail, why don't you tell them how it began? <laughs> Six years ago, we decided that uh, we would bring in New York Times best-selling author Homer Hickam, and he is, of course, the author of Rocket Boys, and which later became a movie called October Sky, mm -hmm. and it was um, it evolved once we realized what we were doing and and um, how the, big it was, how mm -hmm. big that this was going to be. Yes, that's exactly it, okay. and what uh, we could do with that kind of project. We decided that, little did we know what we were biting off, but we decided that we would produce a one book, one campus, one community read. And it was so well received that then we decided every other year and we would do that. And in 2010 it was and David David Baldacci David with Baldacci. his book, Wish You Well. And then, of course, this year, our author is Jeanette Walls, and her book is Half Broke Horses, which there are plenty of around here today, and they are available at the WKCTC bookstore. So if you don't have one, get one and read the book. It's not too late to become involved in the right. one book read. The reason that we felt it was so important to do something of this caliber, and it's not an easy project. We've been meeting for over a year now on this one book read, and um, in fact, the author has been booked for over a year. almost mm -hmm. two years. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we booked her in January, no, in September, a long time ago. We, right. bo we booked her. Of 11. Yes, okay. yes, it was mm -hmm. in, in 2011, that's right. And so we brought her in at that point, um, and of course, then we knew we were going to do a one book read. Right. But this book, again, was uh, something that all of the students will read, as well as many community members. Well, so how do you go about choosing a book, Kim? How do you go about deciding, you know, who the, you know, what the English students will read, both in the high schools and at the college, and what's, you know, good for the community as a whole? We have several criteria. It's, it's really. It's a, it's not always as easy as it would sound. It's it really right. is. It's a huge challenge. Are there criteria to, um, that have to be met in order to there do? There are criteria that we really care a great deal about. Mm -hmm. With the one book, one campus, one community read, we're looking for something that appeals across the generations. We want something that a sixth or seventh grader could read mm -hmm. and and enjoy and get something out of and that would be appropriate for that age. And we want that to go all the way through high school, college students, young adults, adults, senior citizens. We right. really want something that has that those themes all and those. that subject mm -hmm. matter that, that everybody can relate to. So that's really the, one of the first things that we look at is, is it relatable across the generations because we want so many people involved. Um, is it appropriate? Or Which is why it's so hard. Is it relatable and is it appropriate for that yes, large age span? Is it interesting? Mm -hmm. Is it 
a manageable size, you know, right. uh, I think it would be a lot to ask, you know, people to read War and Peace to be able to participate <laughs> in our discussion. Um, so we want something like that. We want something of literary value that, that can be scholarly, that we can discuss in classrooms, mm -hmm. that has a lot of approachable themes and, and things that people will be interested in discussing, things that people can relate to, and then something that our college students can write a college level type of essay about. We really prefer fiction. Mm -hmm. um, that just tends to be traditionally how we do things. And one of the more important things is that the author be alive. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> so they can come and send so the right. right. That's right. Well, the, really, one of the, the crowning moment of, of this whole thing is the opportunity for people in our community to meet the author. Mm -hmm. That's something that a lot of people in their lives will never be mm -hmm. able to have an experience like that. We're really proud mm -hmm. to be able to bring that to our community and, and bring these world-renowned, international, best-selling people who are known all over, world-class mm -hmm. writers to Paducah, where they can, our students can come up and, and shake their hand and exchange words with them. And, you know, we'll talk about this in a minute, but we have a writing contest mm -hmm. every year for, with our, with our books. And one of the really special moments is when the winners get to come and that author presents them personally with the That's award. That's wonderful. And how often can something like that happen? So the author can't be dead. That's right. It <laughs> has to be available. They need to be able to participate in that. And then it, it needs to be someone who fits in with our, our resources and our budget requirements. And we have a lot of boxes that, that have to be checked. We, so it takes, it takes a long time. To, right. And another thing that we have to really be careful of is that the author we pick is a personable speaker mm -hmm. and that they can relate to the people that Kim just spoke about because because while they're on our campus they will speak to three different groups of people they right. will speak to our students in a town hall more um, intimate. informal mm -hmm. intimate setting in Crouts Hall and then they will speak to the general public that evening she will attend a reception where we'll invite special people in the community and then she will speak the next morning to ninth through twelfth graders, so you know it's so a. So not only does the book have to cross all of those age groups, so does the author. Exactly. And I liked how you said that it was a way to meet the author, but it's also a way for people of all age groups to come together. Absolutely. And to share talk, that common experience. Share that common ex experience with each other in the book that they've read. Yeah, it's a great platform to begin a lot of meaningful discussions and and bring yourself and your own experience to right. it you know that's been the great thing over the years mm -hmm. is seeing what people in their own experiences bring to the different reads you know this one has so much to do with family folklore and family history mm -hmm. and and we all have that so you know we've gotten to share a lot of stories about you know, our grandparents or some interesting aunt mm -hmm. we had and right. you know different stories that have been handed down through the generations in our own families and everybody can relate to that and right. and it gets I think younger people really excited about looking into their past too. So Laura, you work for the high schools, yes. Yeah, so. speaking about the younger people wanting to get involved with it, they know who Jeanette Walls is. She's on, you know, a variety of shows and so when you hear that you will be able to actually see, talk to, you know, might even meet and greet this author, it's just uncommon for a high school student to be able to read something and then actually meet that author. Right. So I think that's what really gets them excited about the, the one book read for the high school setting. You know, we're not just incorporating the students who are in the college academy, but any high school student that's not through 12th grade that can come out and, and just meet and listen to and really see a real person who has created a book. And there are a lot of uh, wannabe authors out there, right. and so they can ask questions about, you know, how could I go down this road, or what mm -hmm. is a day in the life like in, in your, you know, in your day or your life? So. They're excited about that. Well, there's something there's something so neat about reading a book and then meeting the person whose ideas mm -hmm. came on that on that paper, you know, because it's just you know, I, I always thought I wanted to be a writer or a songwriter, and it is just not that easy. <laughs> no. It is not that easy to do, and it so to not. be able to meet this person that her ideas were, you know, published in a and book. And to see that she's a real human being mm -hmm. and that, that this happened for her. And especially, a lot of people may be familiar with The Glass Castle, which was the mm -hmm. first book that really put her on the map, and that's her memoir. And when you read about the circumstances that she came from and the things that she encountered and the fact that, my goodness, I think she was lucky to live through childhood much oh, less, exactly. you know, have the successes that she had. 
I think a lot of people would find that really inspirational. Right. You know, there, a lot of us come from you know, challenging circumstances. And, and Lily in our book, Half of Our Courses, and the, the things that she survives, and, and even just she manages to thrive and have, mm -hmm. have this amazing life. She does. You know, despite the adversity. And I think people find that really inspirational. And what These we should people. say is that Lily is actually. Jeanette's grandmother. That's right. And so these stories were told to her partially by Lily and partially by her mother. And, and then, of course, it is, you know, a, a work of fiction as well. So um, it's an interesting story. And Lily was an amazing character. She was. She learned she was. to fly a plane. She did some bootlegging in her time. She was a, a school player. teacher. She, yeah, school um, teacher. Yeah, yeah, and she learned to drive a car, which, you know, in that time was unusual, especially the flying of the plane. Right. And um, well, she rode her pony. Well, this is somebody who grew pony. up in a dugout right. on a, on a right. ranch who, you know, didn't have running water or anything like that, but she, she, in right. the side of dreams. a mountain. Yeah, in the side, mm -hmm. of a, in the side of a mountain, her home was built in, in dirt with her family. And, yeah, she endured a lot to get to where she was and to be able to thrive. Right. And that's what I talk about with the high school students. I said, this book is more about perseverance. It's not about breaking horses. Mm -hmm. That's not the only part of it. I think that really gives it a good theme. But perseverance and being able to live through life's struggles, and that's really something that everyone can right. relate to. And I think that's that's really a, when I go out to the book clubs in the high schools and say, you guys should read this, and they ask me why, because it's about things that you may have dealt with or may deal with later on in your life. Or you can talk to your family members and say, do you remember this? Yes. Your grandmother, do you remember this? Was this something that you lived through? Mm -hmm. And so I think that's, it's just bringing those generations together. I think it's really I think neat. something else that's really important about that book to the younger generation is the times were tough. Mm -hmm. I mean, times were very, very tough. As you said, she lived in a dugout. What that means is that she lived in kind of a cave mm -hmm. made from mud. And if it rained too much, the cave started to collapse. Snakes moved into the cave with them. And yet this woman, as you said, thrived in her own situation and became stronger for it. Yeah, but and she I, grew up with her father. I mean, her job was, you know, to do her chores. It was to help break those horses. Mm -hmm. And so she had to help her father do those things because he had su suffered an incident in his life where he, you know, needed help from her and he needed that help you know, to learn how to do that. So she learned a lot as a young child and it really helped her, I think, in her, you know, older years that continued perseverance in her life. Um, so we can just talk a little bit about Jeanette. We talked about the Glass Castle. So if you've already read um, Half Girl Courses, be sure to get the Glass Castle to find out the next, it's kind of, it kind of went in reverse order mm -hmm. because Half Girl Courses was the second book, mm -hmm. but it was about her grandmother. And the glass castle is about her mother, so it picks up really the next generation, you know, till you get to Jeanette and, and how she is now an author, New York Times bestselling author. So Well, and the glass castle is truly the book, as Kim said, that put her, mm -hmm. you know, uh, on the map. That's yes. when she became a well-known literary name. And the glass castle sold like 3.5 million copies, was translated into numerous languages, and was what, let's see, I'm looking at my cheat sheet, <laughs> but one of the top 10 books of the decade, named by Amazon. For, which for like 100 weeks or something yes. like that, wasn't it? For yes. a Especially long time. for a memoir, that right. is, that's a right. huge, huge accomplishment. So, yeah, and that's another thing that we try to do when we are selecting these authors for our one book read. We really love to find someone who is a familiar name that people can yes. really be excited about, mm -hmm. you know, like with David Baldacci. Right. He already had this massive fan base. You know, how many bestsellers did mm -hmm. we have? I don't even know. Exactly. I, I mean, he his it, he writes a book twice a year. Mm -hmm. in was fact, writing a book when he was here on campus. Yes, he was writing in two fact, different didn't he books. he put Paducah in that yes. book that he ended Yes, up he did. Yes. And he wrote part of that, room, that book in our green room. It was really exciting. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, what's he doing? And I said, writing. You know, his next book. We were writing two, the two next books. You know, he was mm -hmm. really working on two at the same time, which mm -hmm. I can't even fathom. But mm -hmm. their minds are just mm -hmm. amazing. And then Homer Hickam had October Sky, yes. which was such a popular movie mm -hmm. that Jake Gyllenhaal was in that movie. Yeah, yeah, that a lot of people had already seen. So we really like to find something that people already have a connection mm -hmm. with. Yes. And, so and Jeanette is also a well-known journalist. That's right. So you know, there was. 
people who may not have read the books may know her journalism mm -hmm. work and hopefully that will draw them in. And for me, Tammy, you know it's all about points of accessibility. That's right. And when you're, when you're marketing something like this, you look for the points of accessibility for various people mm -hmm. and various audiences. So, you know, that's also how we choose our partners as right. well. You know, our partners vary to a, a degree. We have the same group of partners throughout um, throughout the One Book Reads history, but there will be a couple that will change here and there. For instance, with the Homer Hickam book, we were able to partner with Maiden Alley Cinema because of the movie. And as our kickoff event, we did a movie screening at Maiden Alley. It was a big success. It, it was, was a big success. They had more people than they had ever mm -hmm. had that night. We added mm -hmm. chairs, so that mm -hmm. was great. Um, and we partnered with the Challenger Learning Center with the Rocket Boys. Yes, and, yes. And, right. yes. and the American, uh, Quilt Museum, the National Quilt Museum with Baldacci, with Baldacci because we had the Appalachian yes. exhibit mm -hmm. at Barbecue on the River that year. So we really try to make these you a know, community, a community effort. event that that spans really a whole academic yes. year. Mm -hmm. And um, so we've had some really awesome stuff on campus this semester. We had a workshop on training horses. Yes, the art so of training horses. We did that in a, a panelist of mm -hmm. actual horse breakers and trainers. Um, and they came and spoke to us about all that. And then we had the one room schoolhouse. The one room schoolhouse. From, you were instrumental uh, in that. County. And because Lily taught, taught in a one room, in a one -room schoolhouse. And you know, a lot of people have no idea what that really no. means and right. haven't even really seen one. And so they, it was uh, interesting to bring in the partners from you know Graves County where the one room schoolhouse is that we could actually see it being renovated mm -hmm. and where it started and, and it was all covered in, in bush and you couldn't see anything until now they're renovating it and the outside looks just like it used to look and now they're working on the inside so yeah. they're for the generations to come to know that the schools didn't look like they look now. Right. You know, all the grades were in one room and that's how you learned. Yeah. That's been the great thing about the one book experience though is that there's so much you can do across the whole curriculum that it's it's really a, a well-rounded educational experience. It's not just about reading a book for your English right. class but looking at all those different right. issues and, and, and topics that come up in that book and really trying to make the most of those. So like having that Appalachian exhibit where they they learned what caning chairs and, and right. quilting yes. and planting and, seeds. You and know. preserving, canning mm -hmm. uh, the, the food that they grew because yeah. that was a huge part how mm -hmm. they got through the winters. So, so brings a lot we to partnered the with uh, the homemakers and the 4-H mm -hmm. clubs and they did an exhibit on canning, and then we had a long a log cabin building mm -hmm. um, contest with the younger tests, kids, tent for, for, for the children. So, and then we had bluegrass music there mm -hmm. as well, mountain music. Um, we had a wishing day. well, and we had a wishing <laughs> well yeah. that went with us through everywhere we went that year. And in fact, we collected money for the Wish You Well Foundation, which is David Baldacci's um, literacy. Foundation, and then they not only help people who are reading his books, but they help other people who are doing common reads throughout the country. Well, you you mentioned our partners, Gail. I mean, could you just tell us who our partners are for yes. for this? Uh, this year, our courses? partners are uh, the McCracken County Public Library, um, McNett, which is the library network in McCracken County, Paducah Public Schools, and McCracken County Public Schools. Now those are the partners that we have been meeting mm -hmm. with all year and working with and they've done really cool things at their schools. Um, the public library made the first repurposed horse. Out of books they made, yes. they stacked it to look just like a horse. And it was, it's awesome. very, it was, very, it was really awesome. very cool. And now one of the school libraries mm -hmm. has made one as Tell well. Um, they will have costume contests before it's all over with, I'm sure. They did that for, um, I believe, Baldacci and for Homer Hickam's mm -hmm. book. And so any way that they can get the students involved and to create interest and to teach them the lessons along the way. One of the things that Kim mentioned, touched on briefly, that I find interesting about the One Book Read is that it does cross over so many mm -hmm. curriculum guidelines. For, you know, you can talk about social studies, you can talk mm -hmm. about history, you can talk about um, lots of different things. Barry Craig did this year um, two television shows with two different legal 
but moonshiners. <laughs> That's and, right. Um, because, because she was a bootlegger. She was a bootlegger. And so for a it while. tied in. It tied right. into the one book. And she was pretty much forced into that situation, right. but then got out of it pretty quickly when she saw that it was not going to a good place. <laughs> but it was another way that she was always thinking. She was always thinking, it doesn't matter what happens. And one of the things that she says in the book, it doesn't matter. We can't cry about this. We have to move on. And it is what it is. And you just have to move on to the next thing to well, survive. you got to learn how to fall off that horse and, and then learn how to on. get back up. And that's, that's exactly right. right. And I think a lot of her philosophy of life was based on her experiences mm -hmm. with horses, mm -hmm. which, by the way, we're doing something very cool with. Um, on the Thursday at 2 o'clock, we will have a really special guest out front. We're very excited. We're bringing in Farley, who is Now, a, who is Farley? Farley is a foal of Secretariat, and everyone should know who Secretariat That's is, right. a Triple Crown winner. Um, and the foal looks very much like Secretariat, has that diamond shape. Um, birthmark I guess on his forehead and he poses like Secretariat so when you when you read about or maybe you've watched the movie Secretariat and they talked about how Secretariat knew he was having this picture made uh -huh. well Farley does the same thing he poses and he has actually been taken to the elementary schools and, and middle schools, so we're going to have him on our campus so people can come out and see a foal, first generation foal of Secretariat. He's actually the last of the first generation foals. He, Which he means resides. He's right not here. as young as he used to be. No. Now, when, it, when can, and people can be able to, will they take their photos with him? Sure. They need to bring their own cameras. And yeah, bring your own camera. We may have a photographer there that we'll put up on our Facebook, our one book. Um, website and on the college's Facebook page, but please bring your own camera and take pictures with Farley. And this is actually the 40th anniversary of when Secretariat won the Triple Crown in Kentucky. Oh, I didn't know that. See, 1973. Look how good we did. That's just magical. Uh, we, we couldn't have planned that. We couldn't have planned that. That's right, that. the 40th anniversary. So, Kim, you mentioned <coughs> earlier about the um, essay contests. So I know that you had one in the fall, and these are for WKCTC students and, and Commonwealth Middle College students. Well, the one that we had in the fall was for just the on-campus students, so the Middle College and, and mm -hmm. the, our regular West Kentucky students. But that's become another tradition that mm -hmm. we're really excited about and proud of, that we want to get people involved any way they can. And so one of the ways that we in, kind of try to inspire our aspiring writers and to recognize the talent that we have on our campus and in our local schools is is our essay contest and so we had one back in the fall it, it dealt with family folklore so and I think we have a picture of the winners we have a picture of the of the winners we had uh, Nathaniel McKendry and Sydney Jones I believe and Emily Sheckle and we have a picture uh, Emily wasn't available and Donna McLean was the winner yes. actually yes so that was really you know oh. it was a way of telling their family stories and mm -hmm. I met each one of them and they were so thrilled that their essays about their family got chosen as winners of that contest. Oh yeah, that's been the thing that inspired me about this book was the the fact that we all have these rich family histories if, if we'll just look mm -hmm. closely mm -hmm. enough and some of us are lucky enough to have had those stories passed down to right. us and and some of us you know have to put a little more effort into seeking those out but we all have those, we all have those amazing people mm -hmm. that you know um, we could really benefit from knowing more about those people. So we gave everyone the chance to mm -hmm. share just one family story. And we had record participation, more than we've ever had in any writing contest we've had on this campus. And let me tell you, the judging was Pretty difficult good. because they, they were so special. They were all so unique and, and wonderful. Um, and then this right now, actually, it's going mm -hmm. on. It ends March 4th for all of our high schools in the region and our West Kentucky students. There are um, some topics on our website. You, you can just find the, the topic, the entry form, the guidelines mm -hmm. and rules, and um, that's, that's open to any student 9th through 12th in the region and any West Kentucky student, and they deal directly with the book. So there, there are specific topics that are on the one book. You go to the westkentucky.kctcs.edu, uh, West Kentucky, kctcs.edu, that's right, yes. and you can search <laughs> for one book, and we have um, all the information there about this contest, all the entry forms, all the topics that you can enter, and what exactly. did they win? What are the well, winners? that's that's my favorite part, <laughs> is that we have three college winners and three high school winners, Great. so 
a, it'll be a first place and two honorable mentions for each of those categories. Six chances to win. And the first place winners get $50. The honorable mentions get $25. But that's not really the prize. The real prize is that the winners get to come to the VIP reception, be honored in front of all of these people, and get their prize from Jeanette Waltz herself. That's so, great. yeah, it's really a huge opportunity. And very quickly, the winners of the fall writing contest will be invited will, as well. they will be invited as well but their stories were actually published on yes. the website with excerpts from each of them in one of the local magazines right Paducah uh, purchase parenting put the excerpts in there and then they linked to the site um, our site to be able to read the full story so that was really great to be able so to promote really, our students yeah, that way we've had a great opportunity to showcase our own yeah the, the talent that we have here on this campus well, well another also, way that we want to yes. showcase um, our high school students yes. is that they also participated with commercials about the one book and Lori tell us a little bit about that and then we can show them we just simply went out to the high schools that have a TV studio some type of production studio and just they had been reading the book in their English 101 class they went back to their TV productions area and made a commercial and just really promoting what they thought Jeanette Wells would find interesting what they thought their high school students would find right. interesting and you know sometimes when high school students find something interesting might be different than what we <laughs> yeah, see that's, that's interesting. Right. So I think when we when we watch these, I think we see what the high school students get from their perception of the book and the read and what this is going to be, this excitement coming on campus on March 15th. Well, we can show we have Marshall County and Ballard County who submitted commercials. So we can take a look at Marshall County and Ballard County commercials. Broke Horses is a story of Lily Casey Smith's life. Author Jeanette Walls, the granddaughter of Lily Casey Smith, wrote the book from Lily's point of view. Lily overcomes poverty and tragedy with a positive attitude. As a child, Lily learns to break horses. Later in life, Lily runs a cattle ranch in Arizona along with her family. Jeanette Walls says the book is a retelling of stories handed down by my family through the years. Welcome back. Um, Lori, just tell us something, you know, who the people involved were with the, the um, commercials. Yeah, I would sure like to thank Corey Purcell, the advisor at Ballard Memorial High School, and Jared Rosa, the advisor at Marshall County High School, for helping to get those commercials together and getting their students motivated. That's wonderful. Now, Gail, we had one more point of entry, of course, and, and I don't know if I say point of entry, everybody probably knows what that is by now, but we had a a Paducah School of Art photo contest. Yes. Tell us about how the winners will be selected and where their work will the be The winners will be selected by the Paducah School of Art faculty. Um, the photos were solicited both from students as well as from the community and um, anybody could enter. There are no size requirements. It's not just for professional photographers so there's all levels of work that will be seen and um, those works will be on display and the winners will be announced at the opening reception from the National Invitational Photography Show, which is a, quite a big deal, which will be in the Clemens Gallery on March 7th at 5, as well as um, the work will be up through the time Jeanette is here, as well as through the end of the Invitational. So That's it's a wonderful. great way to have your photograph exhibited. Well, we are wrapping it up, but just right quickly, how much does it cost? It's nothing. It, it is, is free. free. It Absolutely is Absolutely free to meet Jeanette Walls, and you know, meet a New York Times bestselling author. Right. And I hope all of you are reading Half Broke Horses. And if you haven't, they are available in our bookstore on campus, in our library, and at the uh, McCracken County Public Library. So we thank you for joining us. And um, the dates again, right real quick. The yes. dates again are Thursday, March 14th, with a 2 p.m. Uh, WKCTC students, a 7 p.m. public presentation, followed by a book signing. And then on Friday the 15th, a 9.30. Is that right? That's right. 9.30 a.m. presentation for 9th through 12th graders. Well, that's thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you next time.